get serious here and like i said people i don't know what's gonna come out of my mouth so if y'all got kids around you might want to tell them to leave the room or you play this later i'm just saying recently in the nba what happened in milwaukee just kicks me off for, because i from personal experience and we're gonna talk probably talk about that later but anyway the milwaukee police department released a Released on Wednesday, highly anticipated body camera footage of one of its officers using a taser to subdue Milwaukee Bucks guard Sterling Brown in a Walgreens parking lot earlier this year and said it determined and said it determined members of its force acted inappropriately. Police Chief Alfonso Morales said officers were recently disciplined without providing details. No man. Well, I'll get back to that later. Officers used a taser to arrest Brown, now 23, in the earlier hours of two, January 26, after the arresting officer noticed the athlete's cars parked across two handicapped parking spaces at a local Walgreens. Soon after, the officer late, later wrote in a police report, Brown emerged from the store and stood within arm's reach of him, refused repeated requests to step back, and became very aggressive. Remember I just said that. The officer subsequently called for backup, after which Brown physically resisted officer's attempts to handcuff him and was taken to the ground in a controlled manner, the officer said in in his report. Brown continued to resist while on the ground as a result, the officer said, and taser had to be employed to get Brown in control with handcuffs. Brown was booked and received a $200 parking ticket, but after looking at the reports and body camera footage, authorities decide against the arresting policeman's request and have to have Brown charged with obstructing an officer. An internal investigation, internal affairs investigation was opened soon thereafter. Earlier this week, Milwaukee Mayor Tom Berry expressed concern with what he saw in the video, which, which he viewed before it was made public. Quote, it was a disturbing video when I saw it, and I know that Morales feels the same way, Barrett said. Quote, and I don't know exactly what actions his department is going to take, but it is disconcerting to see some of the actions in that video, close close quote. The police department has been uh, proactive in preparing for the potential backlash. On Tuesday, Morales released a video in which he promised to be honest and transparent. Should there be, should there ever be an incident where one of our members make a mistake unnecessarily escalating the situation? Two days before that, Assistant Police Chief Michael Brunson Sr. warned parishioners at a local church that the unspecified video would soon be released and asked for their quote unquote assistance once it was. Quote, there's going to be a video that's going to come out soon in the next couple of weeks involving the department, Brunson said. Quote, and I'm going to be honest with you. We're going to need your support during the challenges. Bruh, I'm going to ask you this. Did you see the video? No. All right, man. Now, now, the police report from the arresting police officer was nothing close to what was shown in that video. He lied. That's what was admitted by, uh, what was that, the police chief? Yeah, he lied. Now, if I ain't mistaken, they don't have control Who of the lied? body. The, the, police, the, the, the arresting officer. Right, okay. If I'm not mistaken, they don't control the body camera. It automatically pops on. Okay. Kind of, kind of get what I'm saying? So it's like okay. they don't have discretion of whether, whether I'm going to turn it on or turn it off. Right. But it was on, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you what I saw on the video. The cra- uh, Sterling Brown was wrong. He parked. It's 2 a.m. January, what I say? January 20, 26th. He parks. It's 2 a.m. Walgreens, 24 hours. He parked sideways. So he took up not just two parking spaces. He took up three parking spaces, but he happened to take up two handicapped parking spaces. He parked right up front. 
sideways, taking three spots, okay? So the camera comes on on the – he had one of them the, – the officer had one of them head cameras. It was, like, strapped mm-hmm. to his head, and it was on the side of his head, right? Okay. He walks toward the car. He calls it in. Brown runs out, runs out of store. He confronts Brown. Brown, he's not he's not agitated, nothing like that. He I think Brown already knew he was wrong. Damn, the police is here, you see me how I'm parking. So the police kind of like instigating the situation. Like, you know, what you doing here? It's two o'clock in the morning. And why you why you doing this? Why are you parking the car like this? So Brown's like, man, listen, man, I was in a hurry. I was just in and out. I only took a minute. He said, So what's going on here? I'm like, it's obvious. Dude ran up. In- now, he has an Acura sedan, and it looked like it was it was loaned to him by a dealership. Like, if your car in the shop, they give you a courtesy car. Okay. An Acura sedan. So, I'm, we don't keep it real on this show. Racial profiling. This brother coming out of the store, young brother, nicely dressed, had a gold chain around his neck, jumping in the Acura. You know, please, guys, it's, it's a, suspicious with this. So, it's a parking violation. No need to look up in this car to see what's going on in the car. Right, right. It's a give me my damn ticket and let me be on my way. But he kept on coercing Brown, you know, and say, you know, answer my question. So Brown said, I am, I am. So Brown's not in his face like he said he is. He's on the side talking to him. Okay. So you know Brown to take a step back. Brown's being, you know, he's being petty. He took a little step back. He said, I told you to take a, take a step back. He said, I did. He said, uh, I need you to get out of my face. He wasn't in his face. And he made it in a report as if to say he confronted him, like he took a step toward him. He never took a step toward him. He just sat right there. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So he asked him a question. He said, so what's your, you know, what's your name? He said, Sterling Brown. He said, what is your name? He said, Sterling Brown. Now, you know, this Sterling Brown, you think he's being an asshole 10 years, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm going to tell you about my story about that in a second. But anyway, he said Sterling Brown. He said, well, I need you. I see some ID. Okay, go ahead. So he kept on saying, dude, stop being an asshole and just answer my question. He said, what you think I'm doing? He said, what's your name? He said Sterling Brown. So evidently he didn't know he must not be an NBA player, must be a Milwaukee Bucks uh, a fan because he didn't know. He kept on telling his name. So he you know he's being an asshole. So he called him back up. You would think one car come, right? <laughs> when I tell you the whole damn night shift came through, six cars. Mm-hmm. Car damn near two deep. <laughs> Coming around the back. You know what I'm saying? So he said, so, you know, you can hear the squad cars come in the background. You can see one actually come around the back, go around the back way. He said, yeah. he said, what are we doing here? So this is Sterling Brown asking, what are we doing here? He said, we're waiting for backup. I'm waiting for my backup. He said, you couldn't do this by yourself? <laughs> like, you know, he's like, dude, why you need backup? Well, this is a parking violation. Why you can't do this by yourself? So, like I said, squad cars coming to back. And you can hear the officer go up, walk into each vehicle as if to yeah. say, I only asked for one, one car. I only asked for one car. So that gave me, raised my brow suspicion. The, like, the officer said, I only asked for one car? Yeah, the arresting officer said, went to each vehicle, each squad car and said, I only asked for one car. I only asked for one car. He might have asked for a lot, but then knowing that he's on camera, as it trying to clear it up, I didn't ask for all this. I just wanted one car. But come on, man. So, you know, he's he's sitting there doing his thing. So they surround Brown. Maybe five officers surround Brown. And they asked him, put uh, you hear one ask one officer asked him, take your hands out your pocket. He said, man, I got, he said, I ain't doing nothing. I just got some in my pocket. I just want to make sure it don't move. So they tackle him, put him down on the ground. You hear him say, one of the officers says, taser, taser. And you can hear him taser him and you hear him grunting. Now they put him down on the ground. Is he and struggling? Or, uh, it, it was kind of jumping. So I can't say he was fighting back, but he was down on the ground real fast. But he's down on the ground. They asked him to tase him. So somebody said, right, you got five officers. They don't need to tase him. Exactly. Why are we tasing on the parking violation? Right. So he get tased. He gets up. They got him handcuffed. And I, and I give him applause. He still kept his head cool. He got it in his mind like, I got these motherfuckers. I ain't doing nothing to mess this up. You guys wrong. He asked for an ambulance. Check on him. 
If y'all tase me, call the ambulance, check on my well-being. So y'all, everybody standing around. Brown looking up in the air. Mike, he said, nah, I, y'all ain't going to influence. No, I ain't going to do nothing. I'm waiting for the, for the ambulance to come. So the ambulance come, check on them, basically in the video. So what the officer said in his report is nothing will happen on the video. Mm-hmm. Fast forward. He had the game the next night. He went to the game. He played. He had bruises on him. So somebody asked him, what's up with the bruises on you? He said, dude, it's a personal situation. I don't want to talk about it, which I appreciate. He didn't put nothing on social media. He didn't say nothing to anybody. But it come down, come down to he talked to his team, told his teammates and his coach what happened, which relayed to the owners of the Milwaukee Bucks. The Milwaukee Bucks brought in, brought in their lawyers as if to say, you're going to show us this tape. Because my player said, this is it. This is what happened. And you guys arrested him. And y'all saying this. We, we need to see the tape. That's when all – that's when the police – trying to step backwards and get all their ducks in a row before this video came out. Okay. So uh, congratulations to the Milwaukee Bucks. Congratulations to Sterling Brown for keeping his head on straight and, and not get being provoked to do something, you know, something to mess up what's going on here. Dude, this race, this, I mean, now let's fast forward. Let me tell you about the just what maybe a year or two ago, another Milwaukee Bucks player went to a jewelry store. His name is John Henson. Six eleven Bucks forward went to a jewelry store, went to the front door. They locked the front door on him. He can't get in, so he's not going to win. As a, you know, it's a high price store. Maybe he's saying, okay, they got the locks on. I'm gonna knock on the window so I get in. They go in the back, call the police. The police roll up. Asked him what you doing. He said, "Dude, I'm here to you know, purchase some purchase some jewelry, a watch or something." They won't open the door, so I guess it, you know. He said, "So who car is this?" He had a courtesy car. I think it was a Cadillac truck that he got from a dealership. They run everything, find out who he was. They knock on the door, told him, told the owners who he was, and, jump, and the owners open up the door and act like nothing ever happened. Man, come on, dude! Now I you want to come in and, and give you my money? No way. <laughs> I would have let them know who I was too, but yep. that lost his business. Yep. And that's going back to the Sterling Brown, I appreciate it. Sterling Brown didn't tell him who he was. He just wanted to wait to see what was going on. He could have said, you know, I'm I played for the Milwaukee Bucks. No, he said, nah, I'm gonna see how where this is, which I give him a lot of courage because they it could have ended up wrong, you know what I'm saying, if it wasn't for this body cam. But <sighs> but you would think. I don't know. People, I guess they're just stupid because the resident officer had to know he had a body cam on. Yeah. But the way he tried to be, he, the way he said, you know, he told him to take a step back. Brown said, I'm taking a step back. How much, you know, how much far back you want me to go? And then he said on the camera, I told you to step back, but you keep, but you're coming up in front of me. And Brown said, I ain't moving. So it's kind of like you're trying to, yeah, provoke him. Yeah, to do something. So he had the the the, the right to assault him. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But that goes back to what we always said. Unless you're black, you don't understand none of this stuff that's going on. What if he was just a regular individual? You don't know what, what would have happened. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to get into my situation that I, t- I think you know about. I told you back yeah. when I first got my truck, <laughs> how I got pulled over by them racist-ass Merrill's Mel- Park police officers yeah. for no reason. With the- Real quickly, I understand Sterling Brown. Yes, I'm a black man, and my name is Arnold Glass. Arnold Glass don't fit for a black, <laughs> for a black man, right? So quickly, the cop came to me, unbuckled his holster, and asked me what my name was. Ask for, ask for my driver's license, registration, all that stuff. I'm getting it out, right? I told him Arnold Glass. He said, no, nah, man, what's your what's your name? I said, Arnold Glass. He said, man, stop playing. So I gave him all my stuff, everything. I gave him his license. He said, I, it was a fake license. That's not your name. Brandon, when I first got my Tahoe, which was in 95, this happened in 95, what I had on my license plate? Arnold Glass 2. Glass 2. Glass too, yeah. What more do you? Uh, I, how can I clear this up? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He would not believe me. I was like, dude, I'm Arnold Glass. I gave him, I gave him my work ID. 
He didn't believe me. I said, well, shit, my old man's name Arnold Glass, as you can see, I'm the second. Somebody else, another black man is called Arnold Glass. He started getting agitated. Luckily, somebody rolled up and told him it was the wrong person. I don't even want to get into that situation because it ticks me off again. But <laughs> you get what I'm saying? It's just like, dude, people, if you're not <coughs> oh, oh, basically a man of color, you ain't going to understand what we're going through. And I, I'm tired of trying to tell, tell non-black people what's going on here.